Thank you, Valentina. And I want to thank both Valentina and Leith for the invitation. It is such a wonderful opportunity today to talk to you guys on World Pneumonia Day, deciding new vaccines, which are uh, soon going to hopefully become available to protect infants uh, from pneumonia. I've been working in this field now. I just worked out for about 35 years. And in all that time, there has never been uh, so much new vaccine opportunity uh, imminent. So um, I'm actually traveling in Africa at the moment and have limited bandwidth. So the folk are changing my slides for me. So I'll ask for the next slide. Um, as an introduction, I just wanted to repeat, if it hasn't been said before in this meeting, that deaths from pneumonia are deaths from poverty. Uh, if you look at these slides, the gray bars on the left-hand side show that the pneumonia mortality rate is much lower in wealthy Africans, which is the light gray bars, uh, than in the poorest uh, African communities. And if you go to rich countries, the red dots, you'll see that kids don't die from pneumonia unless they're in the poorest 20% uh, of individuals in rich countries. So death from pneumonia is about death from access to care. Uh, access to oxygen, as we've just heard, and major reductions in pneumonia mortality can uh, be created simply by improving uh, the wealth of the parents. Next slide. Having said that, vaccines play a huge role in reducing pneumonia deaths. And this slide <coughs> just shows you that still today, pneumococcal disease is the leading uh, preventable cause of death, vaccine preventable cause of death. Uh, with uh, more than 300,000 children dying every year, and that's for very Indonesia, not uh, enough vaccine uh, available, even in many other countries, although uh, vaccination is available, not everybody gets it. Uh, but also there are serotypes um, that are not included in the existing vaccines. So I will uh, um, talk about that in a minute. Next slide. So this will also have been covered, but I just wanted to point out the enormous advances that have been made in the rollout of PCB. This is 2006. You'll see only the rich countries had PCB, whereas, next slide, If we look at 2022, uh, there's been a dramatic improvement with only China uh, amongst the large countries that no, there's not providing uh, this vaccine to all of their children. Next slide. Three, next slide, if you can hear me. Okay. So this is a complicated slide with a lot of writing on it, but I'll take you through it slowly. It looks at the landscape of pneumococcal conjugate vaccine beyond the existing licensed uh, 10, 13, and most recently the 15 valent Merck vaccine at the top there. You can see has been licensed, but only uh, to my knowledge in, in the United States for children. So that's uh, a new vaccine which offers a little bit of extra coverage. 22F and 33F, you can see there, were important serotypes in children about five or 10 years ago when this vaccine started its development. They don't make a major contribution to preventing childhood mortality uh, beyond the 13 valent. So I see that really as an expanded version of the 13 valent first generation. But certainly the second generation vaccine uh, you could argue, in fact, they're now third generation vaccines because we started with a seven valent, are the 20 plus valent vaccines. And here we have good news because, as you can see, there are at least four companies listed there. The key thing is, however, that the expanded valency of all of these vaccines, except the last one, are focused on adult serotypes. So the Pfizer vaccine of 20 valent. Uh, is actually uh, designed to cover the most frequent adult serotypes in the United States, not the serotypes uh, that affect children in poor countries. The Affinivax and Vaxite formulations are based 
on the adult 23 valent carbohydrate vaccine, uh, which was introduced in the 1980s. And again, it focused on adult serotypes. Um, the Invent Prize vaccine bottom uh, is the only one which is focused on some important additional serotypes, 15A, 16F, 24F, and 35B. Now, all of these vaccines will contribute to reducing mortality in children. Um, but what I'm saying is that um, at least one of them will, uh, will be specifically designed to protect children. Next slide. So moving on from PCV, the key time in which children die, and many people on this call will be aware, but if you're not aware, almost half of all children that die in the first 60 months of life a die in the first month. And that uh, represents an enormous burden of neonatal mortality. Uh, and this slide shows that neonatal mortality has reduced less than mortality in older children. So if we go to the next slide, what are the major causes of pneumonia mortality in young children? Well, in order to address them, you really need to vaccinate pregnant women because unless you have a monoclonal antibody, which I will briefly talk about, but it's not really affordable for poor countries. You need to vaccinate mother to protect baby. And as it says on the right, we are in a new era of maternal immunization with many, many millions of women immunized for COVID uh, during pregnancy, uh, which has really changed the field of maternal immunization and made us recognize that it is a wonderful opportunity to vaccinate pregnant women uh, to help them protect their infants from disease when the babies are born. So next slide. The biggest news in the maternal immunization space is around RSV. Now everybody on a World Pneumonia Day uh, should know that RSV is the leading cause of pneumonia mortality in children in the first six months of life. The pneumococcus is obviously the biggest cause thereafter. And many RSV deaths may be complicated by pneumococcal disease. Uh, but this slide shows we at the Gates Foundation have funded studies in many countries. And the summary is that between five and 10% of all children that die in the community who have survived the first week of life but die before six months of age will die with RSV in their nose. Uh, next slide. So we funded initially a trial uh, with a company called Novavax to make an RSV maternal immunization vaccine. Uh, and unfortunately, although it was uh, just protective around 40% uh, in the licensure trial, um, that was not sufficient to uh, allow them to uh, continue the development of the vaccine. The lower bound of confidence in that trial was supposed to be 30%. So it was not sufficiently immunogenic. Next slide. So there is Medimmune have made this monoclonal antibody, Nocivimab. It's very exciting. It'll save lives, but only for those who can afford it. And as you've all heard, the babies that are born in rich countries that can afford monoclonal antibodies very rarely die from pneumonia. Uh, more than 90% of pneumonia deaths are in poor countries. So while this is very exciting to have a monoclonal much more broadly available and perhaps much cheaper uh, than palavizumab, which was the only monoclonal previously available, um, while we at the Gates Foundation are searching for more potent monoclonals that may be able to be used in lower dose and therefore be more affordable, but at the moment, there is no indication that we have seen that this monoclonal will be affordable in the poorest countries. Um, so next slide. The most exciting news that we have then is a next generation uh, vaccine. It's a pre-fusion form of the F protein given to pregnant women. These are the phase 2B data from Pfizer. The numbers were small. Uh, but point estimate of efficacy of around 80%. Um, I wouldn't look so much at the lower number there because the numbers are really too small to be confident. 
But if we go to the next slide, and I don't usually show slides from a company, but we've got no other data as yet. This is a press release which came out just two weeks ago, uh, and it is the results of the phase three trial uh, of the same vaccine I just showed you, uh, but now uh, given to a much larger uh, number of pregnant women. And we see in the vaccine efficacy that in the first 90 days of life, there was 82% protection from severe medically attended lower respiratory tract infection due to RSV and around 70% protection out to six months. This is very exciting. I think there is room for perhaps more potent uh, responses, but still an extraordinary opportunity to save many, many thousands of lives. We estimate more than 100,000 children die of RSV in the first six months of life in poor countries every year. So this is extraordinarily exciting news. And the Gates Foundation is uh, contributing uh, funding to Pfizer to make a formulation of this product in a multi-dose part available uh, more quickly and encouraging uh, the licensure and WHO pre-qualification uh, of this vaccine as soon as possible. Um, we believe that in fact this vaccine will be put forward for licensure in the United States before the end of this year in pregnant women uh, and that uh, if it is successful in its bid for licensure, the vaccine should come available next year. And we are hoping that it will become available to Gavi countries very shortly thereafter. So this is one of the highlights of what I wanted to say. Um, briefly before I finish, we'll go to the next slide. There is another major cause of pneumonia and neonatal sepsis. Um, okay, well, this is mRNA, which I think could be very exciting for RSV going forward in the interests of time. We'll go to the next slide. And this is about our, uh, GBS. So group B strep is the leading cause of death on the first day of life. We believe it contrasts, it, it contributes to a large number of stillbirths. If you uh, advance the slide one, you'll see that in fact GBS uh, contributes to 90,000 deaths, mostly neonatal, and we believe around 57,000 stillbirths. So for GBS, next slide, there is also a vaccine in development. These, uh, um, uh, I don't have a slide to share with you, but the, uh, we expect a phase three trial of uh, a GBS vaccine to start next year. And then finally, many babies that die in the first uh, month of life are premature babies. Premature babies face a gauntlet uh, of enormous infection control issues in hospitals where they're exposed to multi-drug resistant pathogens, the leading one of which is Klebsiella pneumoniae. We have a long way to go to a Klebsiella vaccine, but if we can make a 25 valent pneumococcal vaccine, I believe we could make a similar valent Klebsiella vaccine. It is also an encapsulated pathogen. And so we are starting to fund at the Gates Foundation the development of a Klebsiella vaccine. Next slide. Finally then, I wanted to summarize that deaths are declining in children, but pneumonia remains a major killer. Um, and I have mentioned the RSV vaccine, the GBS vaccine, uh, and the Klebsiella vaccine. In my second last slide, I have, do have one more slide. I'd like to invite you all, you go to the next slide, to the second global forum on Childhood Pneumonia, which we are organizing together with the Kaisha Forum. And in fact, uh, Miria is, uh, is a foundation of contributing to this meeting. Uh, and it will be occurring in Madrid next year in April. And we will focus on all of the things that have been discussed in this uh, World Pneumonia Day Forum. So with that, I conclude my presentation. You can show the last slide. Thank you very much.